Well, of no surprise to many of you on the East Coast, we've had some shocking winds up here, especially in the north. Been a big year on the trade winds. It's restricted us. We're trying to finish our live bait course and we've got three videos to go. But uh, unfortunately, we've been out once in the last eight weeks, I think, and um, it's just been so bad, as you'd all know. And the freezing cold winter this year has made a lot of changes to the surface water temperatures and, and things like that, and how long bait and other fish spend near the surface and things like that. So anyway, we're uh, gonna go out, give it our best crack. And who knows, Karen's not here, so if we find a fishing opportunity, we might give that a go too. Now, <laughs> gone as far as we can come. Good old Port Hinsham Rook. Anyway, we thought we'd get in the boat in the water at least. About another 10 or 15, we should start seeing just enough water to creep out on the electric. Good old Cassidy Coast Regional Council. Like a dollar for every time I've heard this is getting dredged over the last decade. Well, it's always interesting coming to Carbal these days, my old hometown. Place hasn't been dredged in over a decade, uh, <laughs> as you can see. So you, you need about a 1.5 metre tide here now to get out, especially a boat like this. You might creep out in a 1.4 metre tide in a little tiny punt or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's pretty ordinary. Anyway, it's just one of those things. <laughs> I thought I'd launch the boat at least. We're probably 15, 20 minutes away from receiving a bit of water to sneak out on the electric, but this is where we're bogged. <laughs> anyway, better to be late than never. So uh, as soon as we can get out, we're gonna get out there, film a few uh, live bait course videos, and we might even have a fish while we're at it. We'll see what, see what happens. We'll get through. It's another 10 minutes and we're right. Fuck off. Unbelievable. Uh, I changed the filter the other day. I filled it back up and primed it, but it hasn't been used for two or three weeks. So the fuel's just not getting up to it for some reason. Fuel and uh, remover. Hopefully that does work out. Fingers crossed. Otherwise it was a short trip. It was. She's working. Okay, I'm trying out a new rod. Well, I've tried it before. We gave one of these away in Barra Basics. We took it to Princess Charlotte Bay for two weeks and trialled it, catching big nannies and finger mark and stuff. Made by custom rod builder Ronnie Farron, a good mate of mine. Doing it for 35 to 40 odd years. Brilliant work. Um, I like the other one so much that I had to get one for myself. So, first trip. These are a great live bait hook. Pretty hard to get in Australia at the moment. So we're just trialling some out from some manufacturers. See how well they hold up, they hook up right, and if they rust or not. With mud herring, I like to tail hook them rather than through the nose, because being a broader bait, the hook quite often turns around through the nose and digs into the side of the body, and that's what we don't want. So that's how we rig the mud herring, always by the tail, right the, towards the very end, close to the backbone. One on a dropper rig, one on a running rig. See what they like. Freezing cold water, bad barometer. Fish have been off the chew the whole week down here apparently. So we're gonna try a bait a bit higher, bait a bit lower. One with very little weight on it. Okay, just a little finger mark I think, yeah. Oh, where's your bigger brothers? I know they're down there. Well, he's still legal size, but we'll let him go. Let him get a bit bigger. Nice little fish. Sorry, mate. Oh, here we go. 
Oh. Okay, this is a better fish. Come on, this will be a better size. One for dinner, hopefully. I love these. Yeah. Nice. Perfect eating size. Not too big, not too small. They're going back to liveys today. They're ignoring the lures. Sub 20 degrees in the water and massively high barometer. They'll only take the liveys today. I think he's coming home, that one. Just how I like them. Beautiful eating size. Stunning meals. Okay, Libby's doing the work. Lures are not working. I've seen this a thousand times. That's why if you learn to do a bit of both, I love me luring, but occasionally I always go back to do a bit of live baiting just for the results. Come on. That's why I like to use 7 hooks on these sort of areas so that when you do get little nanny guy, they don't swallow the hook, they always get it in the corner of the mouth. If you use 5 O's and less, they can uh, put off and get it stuck right down their throat. This guy's just a little bit foul hooked, he hasn't really got it in his mouth, but it's in a bit of skin under his head. Always use the seven O's for this sort of fishing because we're mostly after the bigger fish anyway. Just eliminates those little ones getting it down their throat. Oh, more. Go away. I don't want you. Oh, look how small that one is. This is the uh, juvenile grounds for the, the nanny guys. Ensure on any kind of structure where they all grow up before they head offshore. God, all right, too many wigglers here. Can't get the baits down there long enough, so the giant schools, these little nannies. Good to see though, but if I start catching too many, and I'm not after, I'm not catching what I'm after, that's it, Just get out of here. I'm gonna move along just quickly. Too many little fellas here. Can't get a big one. Yeah, we might go and have a look at a couple of barra areas now. Gonna head back in close to the marina. Tuck in there for a bit, have another quick fish maybe. And uh, call it a day after that. I've had enough. <laughs> I think we've got enough water to make it to the ramp now, so we didn't give it long here. <laughs> anyway, we've achieved something. We've managed to get our liveys videos out of the road today and spent a few hours fishing, which was very unsuccessful. But it just goes to show you, even the best of us have dud days. When the environment's against you and the fish are against you, there's nothing much you can really do, except keep plugging away. It's the most important thing to remember. Anyway, let's go and put this thing on the trailer and uh, go and have a cold beer. Okay, heading out today again, guys. Oh, well, yesterday uh, we didn't get too much fishing in, done a little bit. Still got one more video to make first, but uh, if we see any fishing opportunities, we're going to give it a crack. It's just been too long, we just have not been out. Bloody weather's been terrible. Just caught some nice liveys, some nice mullet and some mud herring and a few casts, that's all we need. We've got 30 good baits there. If we see a school official or two, we're going to drop down and see what we catch. It's good to be able to combine both worlds. You know, film our liveys course as well as get some good liveys for bait. I did actually learn a lot from live bait fishing years ago and uh, it's a very good form of fishing and of course you do catch more fish than lures, even though I love lure fishing too. But it allowed me to learn a lot more about the movements and the habits of fish and then I swapped that over to lure fishing techniques. So it really helped me a lot. So anyway, we've got our bait, we're gonna head out around the other side of the island. It's freezing cold out there, the bad barometrics, but we're gonna go and see if we can catch something anyway. Maybe finger mark, uh, we're gonna go and target those kind of areas. First up, was off to Missionary Bay to finish off some filming for our liveys course. Mission successful, and then we decided to head over towards Guild Island. And on the way, we came across a herd of dugongs. 
It was about a dozen there, but uh, we couldn't get them all together in the one spot. Great to see some calves there as well. Uh, and the numbers are slowly coming back after they were decimated by Cyclone Yasi in 2011 after it demolished their primary food sources. Anyway, on to Gould Island uh, to look at a few fishing spots. Just as we thought though, they were pretty lame, only a few pickers and of course a few cod. Uh, they didn't disappoint as usual, they'll always bite when the fishing's tough. Few failures out there, so we thought we'd come back in here to one of my old favourites. There's a few finger marks sitting here. I don't like my chances of getting one, but we'll sit it out long enough. We've still got to wait to get back into the marina yet. Who knows, we might even have a crack at some barra before we head in. But uh, yeah, rather slow day. All the little stuff's eating, but the big stuff is either gone or a few that we do find have got locked jaw. Or they're covered in sharks. Not a little fella. What do we got? A little finger mark, is it? Yay, finally. <laughs> Not the size I'm after, but anyway, the old favourite produces. <laughs> okay, he's only a little fella, but I'm just making sure he is legal. Yeah, it's about 45, that one. So he's good to go. That's dinner. Not too many finger markers safe when they come in my boat. I let a lot of fish go, but these are my all time favorite. Because they're so finicky, we're gonna stick with liveys. They're not even looking at the lures, see the little fish. Okay, with a bit of luck, might have another finger mark. Not a monster, but yeah. A couple around that size will be great for dinner. You beauty, my favourite. The liveys are doing the trick for us because everything's just ignoring the lures today, apart from cod. Another nice little good eater around 45 centimetres. Just packed up, a couple of small finger marks there, but in the blink of an eye, the 15 to 20 knot change has finally reached inshore. It's been offshore all day. We tried to get out past the uh, Cape Richards earlier, but it was just too rank. Anyway, they've gone off the bite as soon as that uh, change came through, they disappeared off the sounder. So we're gonna go and tuck in close and just try for a quick barra before we get off the water. Right, got a pesky triple tail here. I pulled the hooks on him on the strike on the bow when I teased him up, and there he is. He's always oh, right on it. Normally they, they'll take a lure real easy, these things, but I suppose we got very high barometer and 20 degrees in the water, and most other fish are shut down. So I'll wait for him to come up again. You can see he's staying there when he does. They're a delicious eating fish. They're, um, rather prized amongst fishermen. You don't sort of encounter too many. Some places they're better than others, but uh, Hinchinbrook here, sometimes you see uh, quite a few leading into the spring, early spring. But at the moment, that was just one decent sized one. They'd, they get up to about eight or nine kilos, maybe a little bit bigger in some places, but the average one's around about two kilos, two to three maybe. Okay, lunchtime, we've come back a little bit early. We've managed to knock off the course videos we needed to film, but uh, fishing's a little bit quiet. Well, I rolled one big barra, uh, played with a triple tail for a while. He was a bit hard to get to bite as well. Got a couple of finger mark, a bunch of small little nannies and that. But uh, yeah, time to call it quits. Karen will be happy. We achieved our, um, our goals with the course videos, but now it's time to get off the water and head on home. Okay guys, if you like this little video and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Insta. And if you only want some special tips, we send out by email only. Head on over to our website, rymoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and see you next time.